Hello, 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 hello. Awesome, there's a lot of people who wanna know how to do this. A while back I saw some other knit brushes in Procreate and I never, uh, I, I don't remember who they were from and I don't know how they did them, but there's definitely more out there. Um, this is just how I uh, figured out how to do it. I actually stumbled upon it when I, I was making the brush that is just the knit look and I realized, oh, I can use that. I was making it a repeat pattern. So I'm gonna show you how to make these knit brushes and make a pattern. I just wanna warn you in advance, it takes some patience. All right, well, let's get started. This is what you get, this canvas is what you get in my most recent newsletter uh, freebie. And um, this is, set up in a way that's kind of hard to look at where I have the red grid. So the red grid is just so you can kind of uh, get things where you need them to go and that'll make sense later. So one stitch is one little V. So the V's are going to be pointing up, right? Just so your one stitch is two of these sections. And Procreate has a glitch right now that um, I'm going to warn you about. I've emailed them, but the, you know it takes time for that kind of stuff. Um, so one stitch is a V, but you can see up here, because it's a seamless repeat, we have the V of this one is only the bottom half. And this is why I have these red lines on here. I'm, you can change the color of them. You can change the um, how many of them. You can grid size and do whatever you need, but the you need to be able to find the bottom uh, section, uh, the top half of your V sometimes if you're going right along the, the edges with one of your designs. And then on the right and left side, it's split up. One side is one part of the V and one side is the other part of the V. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, um, just really, really quick, um, I'm gonna turn my grid off for now. Um, I'm just talking about these knit brushes that I have that give a really great look. But these are seamless repeat patterns. So for this one, my my repeat is actually, um, let me let me find a just a simple brush. My repeat is like right here. So you do have to be able to sort of visualize uh, a repeat, but not a super complicated one. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through how the process goes for making it. Uh, but I'm seeing somebody saying that they got the newsletter but didn't see the template. So there's downloads um, where it says to get your freebies um, and then it goes to my website and there's a, there's a password in the email. So when it links to my website you need to type in that password. Alright, so let's, let's go ahead and get started. I just wrote fill here on your um, canvas that you're going to get, but you can just add layers. Uh, just be underneath uh, your outline layer. So don't, I locked this layer. You can, you can change the color if you want, if the gray doesn't work out for you right now, um, but don't select it and accidentally nudge it. So this layer just needs to stay put. And let me turn my grid back on so I can see where my center is and things like that. What I did was I went to um, Pixabay and I searched, what did I search? Knit patterns. Uh, if you need some inspiration, this one's not very inspiring because it shows the V's, but then it just shows these squares on them. So that's not helpful. Um, but some of them are helpful because if you zoom in, you can see that they're showing the little V's. Um, this requires a lot of counting. Okay, I'm going to do, you know, this many white ones across and things like that. So I, I just wanted to show you that there's ideas out there, but we're just going to make up a basic, um, let's do a snowflake um, because it is uh, a tiny bit tricky. And they're eight pointed snowflakes. So uh, that's just kind of a t traditional knitted snowflake look. All right, here we go. You can pick any color you want. Um, I'm gonna just pick a blue color. 
and we're going to tap the selection magic wand <laughs> and go to automatic. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our threshold is okay. So we're on this knit outline layer and we're on automatic. And when I'm going to zoom in, when you tap one, it should just select one. So if you put your pencil back down in the blue and swipe, you can see threshold up there. Mine's only at 49%. So I'm going to keep starting in the blue and going up, starting in the blue and going up. You can get pretty close to 100. And once you go up too high, it's going to fill in all the way. And you don't want that. So then you slide back down. So I'm at like 99.6 right now. And what that's doing is it's making your selection um, overlap the the knit outline layer here, but it we're underneath it, so it's okay. All right, so now you've set your threshold. You if you deselect and then select again, your threshold is going to stay set there. So just get that started out. Make sure I know where my center is. And I am going to um, have this center stitch be blank and I'm actually going to leave this whole column blank along this red center line and I think I leave this whole line blank along this center line too so let's go up a stitch and over a stitch and we're going to select those two so that's our our starting point uh, for oh gosh now I'm forgetting <laughs> ah I need to look at an image really quick. So let me just look at my one of my images really quick. Oh, so this one has this one's a little bit different. They don't have to be like that. These are my oh, that's a video. I can't see the center. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just blanking on how that center looks now. Okay. Whoops. Um, I've apparently selected. Uh, oh, let me show you what the glitch is. So when you have a few different ones selected and you accidentally select a wrong one, or sometimes you accidentally select the line itself, you need to two finger tap to undo. And when you two finger tap to undo and then you start selecting again, this is where the glitch is. Another one will undo. So do you see that? So you need to reselect it. And usually that's obvious if it's right near where you're working. But sometimes you have to select the four corners and you, you do an undo and something way over here deselects and you don't notice it. So. Um, hopefully they get that fixed soon. So this is what we're doing to, to get our design going. We're, we're selecting um, multiple spots at once and then we're going to fill on a different layer. So now I'm blanking on how to do the snowflake. So uh, let's skip the snowflake for now. <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain threshold again, but you, this video will be um, there for you to go back and watch. Uh, but basically, you do, you do need to select and then tap in the blue and swipe up and watch your threshold up there and get it really close to 100. All right, so let's go ahead and make a diamond. Um, so for a diamond, we need to select on the middle line here and it's opposite stitch right there because that's one stitch and then we can just make a diagonal line up and you'll get fast at this and you'll accidentally tap the line sometimes and have to undo and now up here it's the bottom part of a stitch and you need to go find its match down here. Those really throw me off. And then we're going to do the same thing. And 
and then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, so I did a, a good example of, so now watch up here, one of those is going to disappear. So way up there, one disappeared. So really watch for that. And you can go back and fix problems if that happens. Um, when, and you know, don't notice it until you've made a brush and you see a spot where there's a missing piece that isn't supposed to be missing. Remembering one stitch is one V. So you need to, oops, I selected the line. So you need to make sure you um, do a V for every single stitch. So we can do this in stages, just in case you accidentally deselect, you don't wanna lose all that work. So you're gonna come down to another layer and tap it and tap fill layer. And that is filling all of those things that we did on that layer. And then we're gonna keep doing that. You can do this on multiple layers. So if you think, well, I really like the diamond, but I'm not sure about this next step, put that next step on a different layer and then you can go back and erase it and um, turn the layer off or, or get rid of the layer and, and start over. Or if you want to have a diamond as your base for several brushes, have this on its own layer all the time and then work on other things on your other layers. So now we select again. Oops, we need to go back to the outline layer and select again and do some more stitches. So let's do that center one and let's do diagonals um, through the whole, crisscross through the whole thing. It'll be a little bit of an argyle look, I think, or maybe it'll just be a diamond look. I haven't done this particular design. So the top, the very um, corners, if you want that stitch selected, it is every single little teeny tiny bit of the corners. So that's one stitch. I just selected my line. So I needed to two finger tap to undo. I'll check for questions as soon as I get this last section done. So it doesn't have to be snowy patterns and I'll go back and look at one of the snowflake patterns that I've already done. Uh, I've done them a few different ways um, to show you what they look like in this form. And then I can go to a new layer and tap fill. And now I have those on separate layers. Now here's something you need to know for all of the designs that you do. When we had a high threshold, it means that this blue is tucked under this dark gray. So if I were to turn this dark gray outline off, it's gonna look really ugly, watch. You see how pixelated that looks. That's our threshold, just trying to make sure that there's no white pixels exposed from this white background um, along the where the two things meet there. So to get rid of that, we do need to get rid of that. All you need to do is select the knit outline layer by don't don't do select in this these menus over here. Select from the menu here select and then go to one of the layers and tap clear and then go back and select and go to the next layer and tap clear you're going to do that for each of your layers and now look how clean it looks with the um, selection and the clear oops someone's saying they have no sound can you guys hear me uh-oh. Can you hear me now? I just unplugged my mic. Maybe something happened with my mic. I'm gonna wait a second.
Sarah, you're, you're saying you could hear me the whole time? All right, I'm going to try to plug my mic back in because it's definitely better sound with my mic. Okay, hopefully, so let me know if if you can hear me now. There's a delay, so it's hard to know if you're saying <laughs> that you couldn't hear me before and you can hear me now. Okay, so some are saying they heard me the entire time. Okay, good. So it was probably not a problem on my end then, hopefully. Um, I'll go back and watch this part. How many minutes in are we? Um, and make sure that you, that in the video, in the recording, that there isn't some weird audio gap. And if there is, I'll comment with the information that was missed. All right, so let's go ahead and just test this pattern. So we're going to turn off, you can turn off your grid line. Um, we're going to turn off the outline. So that outline was already used to make a brush that was given to you already. So that's this knit outline brush. Um, it's important not to change the settings on any of these brushes because they all work hand in hand unless you change all of them. So. If this brush doesn't go big enough for you and you want to change the size, for example, it will no longer line up with these brushes. So um, I would recommend just leaving them alone unless you really know a lot about brushes. I know someone's saying they could hear me better with, uh, without the mic. Um, yeah, it's just weird if I turn my head, you wouldn't be able to hear me without the mic so it, it ends up it's probably because my phone is right in front of my face right now um, sorry about that hopefully you can turn your volume up um, all right so we're gonna take one of the brushes I gave you and duplicate it so just swipe and duplicate so that's the one we're gonna be playing with right now but we need to create our new um, brush source the shape source and we need it to be black. So I'm gonna two finger swipe on these layers to alpha lock them. Select black. We could have done black all along. It's just prettier to do other colors. <laughs> and fill. And now three finger swipe down and copy all. I'm gonna group these layers and turn them off and go to a new layer just so we're ready to test our brush. Go to that duplicated brush, it has a one on it, and go to the grain source. I think I said it was the shape source, but we're doing grain source. Edit grain source. Yours is going to look different if your iPad is in landscape mode. Things are all kind of in different places. Import and paste. If yours shows up with a white background, you're going to want to two finger tap to invert and make sure it's white on black and then tap done, and tap done again, and test your brush. So that's a pretty basic, that was not Argyle. <laughs> so it's just a diamond. Um, and then what, what you also need to know, so let's go ahead and do a pretty red on uh, with white on it. So just find a red and fill that layer, and go to a new layer. I'm trying to slow down. I know I'm kind of going fast. Um, go to white, and then we're going to test our brush with the outline brush. But we need to make sure they're both identical in size. And, and that's not as simple as just sliding over here to any number. You need to slide to the number you think you want and then come way out here so that you have much more precision control over that number. And I'm going to go from 44 to 45. So 45, I know this is a repeat for some of you. I've done a couple of these combo brushes lessons. But going just to 45 isn't enough because I could be still on 45 for quite a while here before it goes to 46. 
So I am going to go from 44 right when it goes to 45. I'm going to lift my pencil and then I'm going to do the same thing for the knit outline brush. I'm going to come down close to 45 and then slide out. I can't see here. From right from 44 to 45 and lift my pencil. So now I know they're both identical and now we can test them. So you're going to, you know, fill whatever space you need to be filling. And then you can go to a new layer or a, uh, stay on the same layer. I just go to a darker version of the background color. Um, you can play around with blend modes and things like that. Test the, uh, get the, the outline brush. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. and it should line up perfectly. Don't rotate your canvas. If you move your design before you do this step or rotate your canvas, then it won't work. Just like that. And where it comes in handy is when you have something where you want the fabric to look like it has a knit look like this guy. I did the knit on a clipping mask and then with that, so here's the clipping mask, um, and then with that I moved it around using liquify and push. So you can push it around and that will help you um, kind of just make it look more like flowy fabric. I'm going to find the other brushes. So here is what my tree design looks like. And I made a snowflake split in half here and here, which was challenging. <laughs> Here's another design. So this is a very basic snowflake. One, two, three. Okay, so I can show you that. Now, I, now I'm remembering how to do that. This one's just snowflakes all over. This one has a lot of diamond shapes around a snowflake. And then I think I had more in this one. Oh, this is, this is the brush that also came today in the newsletter or last night the soft chalk brush. Here's another one. We could do something like that. Let's see, it's been 25 minutes. So stick with me if you want to learn a snowflake um, and we'll do something like this one. Because wrapping your brain around a repeat pattern is can be tricky. So let me group those together and turn those off. Turn our knit layer back on. Um, select it as I mean highlight it make sure you're on that layer I should say I'm going to turn my grid back on so I can see where the center is I'm going to select um, let's let's choose another color I don't know why I'm being picky about color right now it doesn't matter <laughs> I'm going to choose a yellow all right so um, on a different layer, just so in my mind, so you can put in a little spacer and you, and you can delete it later, make a little cross. So the center one and then, um, so three by three. And let's just fill that on a different layer. And we'll, we'll add our design to a completely different layer which means now I want a different color. I'll choose red. So that's our sort of filler. We're going to have gaps in those spaces. Select again. Ah, so I wasn't on the right layer. So go back to your knit outline and select. And I'm going to go one, two, three. 
and then I'm going to go over a row, but up one. One, two, three. Over a row, up one. One, two, three. I'm totally doubting this right now because I don't have room over here for another one. I did something wrong. I think I need to leave another gap. I think I need to start up one right there. Hold on, let me just practice this really quick. And then over here, <laughs> yes, this is right, okay. So can you see where, so I did, I have our little thing here and now I have a space here and I did three, three, three. And then over here, I'm gonna go three across this way. So one, two, three. And then on the next row up, one, two, three. And on the next row up, one, two, three. I'm gonna duplicate that down here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So for this down here, I'm gonna have this gap right here. And this start right here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, I haven't tried using the symmetry tool for this. We can test that. And the only reason I am fast at this is because I've done several. It takes practice. And then go to a new layer and fill. Then you can turn that one off. Oh, it looks like we need something in the center there. Yeah, you gotta go back to the right layer. <laughs> Hmm. All right, maybe not. We'll see how that looks. Actually, I know. Right here and here and here and here. I think that's what it usually looks like. So from there, you can keep going and pick a spot in the center I keep forgetting to go back to my outline layer. Pick a spot in the center, and then, so I have this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's the one, so I have, you know, it's symmetrical. Oh, let's test, let's test symmetry. Um, I'm not sure how symmetry is gonna do with this. So I'm on vertical symmetry. We'll do that for now. Hmm. No, I don't think symmetry works with the, um, no, it's just doing, did I have symmetry on on my layer? I didn't. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, drawing assist was on on the layer I was using for selecting, but that still didn't work. But what about if it's on? Yeah, no, I don't think so. It doesn't appear to work with the selection tool. So that's interesting. So um, just a real basic um, uh, just to show you how to meet up on the sides for something uh, like this, like that uh, one that had the kind of zigzags along the sides. You're just going to keep going. You're going to keep going with, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I 
I, I just realized I selected the wrong one. Ah! You're going to keep going with your design, making sure you are applying your own symmetry. So if I, if I went to the fifth one up here, I went to the fifth one down here. If you want, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. All you have to do is make sure if you touch the edges, they're touching the edges in the same spots. So up here, if I want to go up and then back down, I'm going down to the same level as that, and I'm going back up. I'm not sure it's going to line up right over here, but we'll test it out. Oh, it, it did. Um, I don't know if that was just lucky, but the first half of this stitch ended up in the same spot as these other ones. So now I need to do the same thing over here, up and down and up and down. I'm kind of looking over here to make sure I'm going up and down high enough and low enough. So that stitch and that stitch are going to combine into one full stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So if you want the same thing to be happening down here, you would just make sure you're counting and doing the correct number of them. Allie, did you to do it this way? And then I'm going to fill that layer. Then we go back to my outline, select, and I think I am going to, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, uh, the, so I've done this once and you need to do it really carefully. I'm going to duplicate my snowflake and try to not have to remake the whole snowflake and put one half over here and one half over here. So I need two of them. One is the original, and then the, these two we're going to slide. I'm going to turn off all of my other layers, all of them, and have one layer at a time. I am going to a solid brush, and I'm putting a little corner marks on those, on that. I can turn that grid line off. And this way, my layer will be selecting the entire canvas. And I'm going to select it, and I'm going to turn on magnetics. No, sorry, snapping. I don't need magnetics. And I'm going to slide the whole thing over till it snaps, and you get the gold lines in the center vertically and horizontally. So let's test our outline layer, turn it on, and it lines up. Perfect. So I'm going to turn that off, and we'll do that one more time, sliding it to the other direction. So select it. We also need to get rid of the corner marks we added. Uh, put your corner marks on. That's so the selection will grab the entire canvas size and slide it over and snap till you get the two gold lines and let go. Now we need to get rid of these corner marks. I just, oops, I just freehand select those. And on the other one, the corner marks. Turn our center one back on, turn our zigzag back on, turn our grid back on. That all looks good, but we do need to do our select and clear. So let's do select, clear, select. Oh, we could merge all these. Clear. We can delete this one. All right. Alpha lock. I have to go soon because I'm doing the same live over in my Facebook group at 11. Um, turn them black. I'm keeping these separate because I might want to make a design that doesn't have the zigzag, for example. So now they're nice and clean, crisp edges. 
three finger swipe down, copy all. Go back to our brushes, duplicate, go into that one, any of them, grain, edit, import, paste. Make sure it's white on black. Done, 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 done. We can group these so we know they were intended to go together and test our brush. Let's go back in here. We will turn off that white layer. Ooh, do we remember what percentage we were on? I think we went from 44 to 45. So to get it to line up with this particular layer that we did earlier, turn it to white and turn our brush size. Oh, you know what? We duplicated that brush, so it should be the right brush size. If it weren't, you'd have to make sure you set it to the right brush size. So this is a good way to test and see if you like your design. Or see if you want to add something more to your design. If you want to add something more to your design, then what you would do is you would go back to your design, turn your liner back on, and just start adding maybe on a separate layer. Start selecting and filling and adding more. And then doing the same thing, three finger swipe down, copy all, and go back into the brush that you're editing and paste the new version in. Are there any questions? Someone has a question about the password for my free brushes. It is in the newsletter. Did you get a newsletter? It is a great mental exercise. <laughs> it's a little bit um, tedious, but it's I I like trying to come up with different designs. So <laughs> your brain is knitted. <laughs> you can do it, Allie. I'm counting on you. <laughs> Yeah, and you don't have to use white on red, right? You can, you could even, oh, I haven't done this yet, but technically, gosh, so the, the, the pictures, this one we looked at with all the colors, there was another one with multiple colors. No. Oh, this one. You could technically make multiple brushes with, the different designs. So make one brush, you make it still with the black and white image, but then when you use the brush, you use it with blue, for example, or green, right? So you could make multiple brushes that when used together would make something like this, but I haven't gone that far. Hello from Germany. I didn't drop a stitch. <laughs> I have um, with the glitch that I showed you that where the um, when you two finger tap to undo a selection and then when you start selecting again it undoes another one. Um, so I've had one where I had a little corner missing. Sorry I'm just reading the comments here. Yep if it comes in if your source brush source comes in uh, as black on white just two finger tap to invert it. You can also rotate these two fingers. Thank you so much everybody.